Good evening everyone, happy Monday, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another live stream. So I hope everybody's well. I'm just looking at the chat there, so another one I'm chuckling away. We've got a few in tonight, we had, a, we had a few in earlier on when I was just setting everything up to be fair. So let's have a look and say hello to who we've got in the chat tonight. So we've got Mark, I think has been one of the, the first ones in tonight. We have uh, Michael in as well from Miniature Painting, and then he switched over to his MTG and More channel. So hello, Michael, and hello, Mark. We have Big Beard Painting in as well. Nice to see you, Travis, mate. How are you doing? We've got Christian in. Are you Christian? Christian was our, our lucky winner from the Walking Dead live stream a couple of weeks ago, and I see that he's now got his, uh, his prize as well, so that's good. Um, Mr. Spooky Thing. Please remind me that is you, Tony, isn't it? I must. I, I keep forgetting if that's you or not, mate. Let me know down in the comments. That's, I'm pretty sure that's you. Um, what we got? Where are we now? We got Scout in the web. Nice to see you, Lee, mate. How are you doing? I promise it'll not be all board game chat tonight, mate. So I'll make sure that there's plenty for you to get your teeth into. I'm sure we'll probably touch on Age of Sigmar at some point as well with a new version coming up. We have got uh, Steve's in as well from Steve Small World. Nice to see you, Steve. Uh, we've got Jamie in as well. Jamie's doing a bit of hobby tonight. I think he's doing uh, the uh, Deepkin, so he's doing a bit of work on those. We have got Phil's in as well, Phil Wilkinson. Nice to see you, fella. Adam is in. Evening, Adam. Uh, this is where Mr. Spooky Than was telling everybody to hi. That's what I was chuckling at at the start of the chat there. We've got Neil in as well. Nice to see you, Neil, mate. I hope you're well. And Jamie is asking, ooh, what's a super chatter? So a super chatter is um, basically what you can do now. So if anybody's familiar with Twitch, what um, what you can do on Twitch, you can either subscribe to channels, which is basically where you give them um, a, a recurring monthly payment, which gives you some kind of bonuses. Like I think you get like little, um, so your little icons that you see in the chat down the side there, you get a, a special uh, icon to say that you're a, um, you're a subscriber and that you're, and, or a sponsor, I think it is on Twitch. And it also, I think it, it, you might highlight your comments as well. You can now do that on YouTube. And a super chatter is a one-off donation. So I think you can donate. I don't, I don't think there's a minimum, but you can make a minimum donation um, as a one-off thing rather than a recurring, um, a re recurring payment. So it's just a, another little way that YouTube is trying to make live streams a little bit more like Twitch now. So that's what it is. Anyway, mate, and what happens is because of this new software I've got now, um, anybody that donates to the channel through, through Super Chat, it pings up there at the bottom. And Michael was the last one in our last stream, in our live stream. It's also incorporated Patreon as well into this now as well. And I'm trying to find out how to, uh, how to attach that as well so that the Patreons come up as well. Um, so <laughs> as if just to test it out there, Jamie's just there. Uh, took me a few pennies there. Thank you very much, Jamie. Much appreciated. What you should see is, you'll sh you should see that update now. I think we, we, we worked out the last time there's a slight delay on it from when it comes up at the side of the screen there until when it comes up down the bottom here. But it does, it does work eventually. And I think, if I remember right, yeah, we might even still have the zombie on from the Walking Dead episode as well. I've not changed that yet. I forgot about it, actually. <laughs> so, yes, there you go. That's how it works. To be honest, Jamie, I think that'll probably um, it'll go very nicely as a, uh, an extra shot of coffee, I think, in my coffee on the way to work in the morning. So thank you very much. <laughs> so, um, yep, it is Tony. Thanks, Tony. I, I will remember this week. I've got a terrible, uh, I've got a terrible brain for remembering people's names. But now, as I'm starting to realise who's who over a period of time, I'm starting to remember everybody. So apologies for for not remembering that was your name on there. Um, Lee saying he doesn't mind might learn a thing or two like the sound of it well we'll be um, we'll be having a good chat tonight because the, the main point of chat tonight is as you can see behind me there and as you saw on the on the title screen is it's a bit of a chat about what I played at the UK Games Expo this weekend a little bit about some of the companies that I had a chat to I was very fortunate to um, to get press passes which meant I got access on Thursday evening before the um, the event started and it also got me uh, access to kind of do some interviews and um, get a bit more information about what was what was coming up. And I'll also give a bit of a chat about um, just my thoughts on the whole event, really. Um, 
what I will say, I've just noticed there, we've just got a Aurea body there, just popping the bottom. So he's just popping to say hello. He's got to get to work. Um, I met Alex on there on Saturday at the expo. Really nice to meet you, Alex. For anybody that um, saw my Facebook group, the little minty, beautiful football game, it was Alex that created that and very, very kindly uh, gave me a copy of it so I can play it on holiday with the family. Um, I will be doing a video on it. I promised I would do because I, when we played it, we sat and had a cup of coffee and played that game. And honestly, it kind of blew my mind just how, you know, you see all these massive games with really expensive licenses and fancy artwork and everything else. And you forget that inside them is just is just a game to have fun. And, and that was the perfect example of a game that was just about having fun. So I just want to kind of highlight that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, head across the board game geek. Have a look for Minty's Beautiful Football Game. And you'll find Alex's um, listing on there. And it's basically, it's a free print-to-play game that, that Alex has created. It's definitely worth a look. So, nice to see you, Alex, mate. Enjoy your work this evening. Um, so, Neil is asking, I need to know, to either do Expo or Salute next year. I'll tell you what I said to my son on the drive home this week, uh, this weekend, rather. I said I wasn't going to do Salute again after being, doing, doing the Expo this year. So last year, I only did the Expo. I didn't go to Salute. This year, I've done both. And I would say I'm personally not going to go to Salute again, I don't think. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that Salute really is just, it's become a shopping experience, I would say. For me personally, it's just become a shopping experience. And with all of the online discounts these days, um, you can get some pretty good deals online. And unless there is something very specific that you're wanting to see, or there's something that is on an early release at Salute that you really just can't wait for, um, for me, by the time I pay for train tickets down to London, um, I tend not to stay overnight. I tend to go there and back in a day. So by the time I just pay for train tickets, um, plus my kind of tube ticket to get across London, it's a bit of a tiring day. It's a long day. And to be honest, by the time I take all of that into account, I can just, to be honest, I'm, I'm paying more for the few bits that I pick up there than I would have done if I just sat at home and ordered them online. Um, with the Expo, it's a completely different experience. There's a lot more demonstration things. I would say the whole event is much more professional. It really is starting to feel like a mini Gen Con or a really kind of... Um, there's just a real kind of a, a bit of a buzz about the place and it, it feels a lot more exciting. It feels a bit more professional. It feels more, if you've ever been to any of these big um, computer gaming kind of um, sort of, you know, like the E3 type things, it, it feels a bit more like that kind of thing. So it's also a chance to kind of meet up with people, to play games together. Um, it's, you know, the, the food and drink options are better. The, the actual the place itself the um the Birmingham NEC there's a lovely area outside where there's a big lake you can get out and get a bit of fresh air grab a cup of coffee sit and chat or have a few uh, sit and chat a few friends and stuff the whole experience of the weekend of the expo for me personally and I guess, I guess I'm kind of getting into the review of it now is that I really just enjoyed the whole thing I had a great time I got the chance to meet up with a, with a few people some just on the chance we kind of bumped into each other others um. We'd arrange to kind of meet up in advance. And for me, I think I'll personally, I would save my money and I would go to the expo every year this time, uh, from now on, purely because I think Salute, is, it's, it's never really changed from when it first started. It's, it's just a big shopping hall, really. Um, and it's kind of, there's not really anything there that you couldn't buy online. You just get the chance to see it up close, I guess. So for me personally, uh, Neil, if, if it was one or the other, it would be the expo every time. If you've never been to Salute and you wanted to kind of give it a day out and have a look and see what it was like, it's worth the trip. There's some fast, fantastic demonstration tables. Um, there's a lot of games clubs go there and put on demonstration games. And it is it is very much just wargaming. I wouldn't say there's a huge amount of wargaming at the expo. I mean, there's certainly this year Games Workshop were there. So there was some demo tables for Age of Sigmar and Necromunda and 40k and Shadespire. Um, Wild West Exodus were a major sponsor, so there was a lot of um, there was tables that were demoing Wild West Exodus. They were demoing Infinity. They were also demoing uh, Malifaux, as they're now the, the uh, War Cradle and now the UK distributors for those games. 
Fantasy Flight had a huge section as well. So there was Legion, there was Armada, there was the new X-Wing 2.0. Um, so there was a lot of stuff there. Another company I met up with was a company called Parabellum War Games, and they've got a, a miniatures game I'll come on to later on. Um, it's definitely... Um, there is, there's, there's a lot of war game stuff there, but nowhere near the amount of demonstration war games as is at um, Salud. <laughs> lost, what, lost my train of thought there. However, if you're into board games at all, it's a it's a shopper's paradise. It gives you it's it's a perfect opportunity to be able to demo games. Like like as an example, one of the games I demoed this year was the Fallout board game. It was something I probably would have bought blindly, um, but I got the chance to sit down to get someone to demo it to me, show me how it played, and then I could decide whether I wanted to play it or not. And that was just one of thousands of games that you could um, give a run through. It also gives you a chance to uh, experience some Kickstarter games that haven't yet come to Kickstarter or are on Kickstarter now. Let you try them out before you decide if you want to back them or not, because it's always a bit of a risk. Um, so yeah, that that's my very long-winded version of which one I would go to, to be honest. Um, Jamie saying he agrees. Salute is a bit of a shopman day now, uh, and he's saying he'll spot me a lift next time if I want. To be honest, mate, I I, I might I, I would go probably. I would go to meet up with people and have a day out, but it, it almost salutes the excuse rather than the reason, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, that's what I think of that anyway. So, have we got anybody uh, anybody hiding in the background there? Sometimes we don't we don't doesn't always show up exactly who we've got. We've got a few in. I think it says we've got about twenty three people in. That's not too bad, is it? For a uh, for a cheeky Monday night. So. Um, let's see how we're doing for time. Ah, about quarter past. That's enough time. I think we'll we'll start now with some of the things that I've played while I was at the expo. So as I mentioned, I went down on the Thursday night. The press night is basically just rows and rows of tables where everybody, all of the manufacturers, just kind of sit. They don't really demo the games. Um, <laughs> I'm just reading your comment there, Neil. Thanks, mate. I'll see you next week, bud. <laughs> um, they just have rows of tables where all of the different distributors sit behind um, the tables and they just really talk about them. It gives you an opportunity to have a chat um, find out a little bit more without the, the kind of the craziness of the expo. Um, so I did, I, I managed to talk to a few companies. One was a company called, and, and this is terrible, I've actually forgot the name of the company, but their game was called Hero Master. And it was a card uh, game, which was very kind of loosely based on a, a Dungeons and Dragons style adventure where you pl you each play different kind of characters and you were all trying to work together um, to kind of to tell your story. Uh, it was guy the guy who was called it's coming back to me now. The Noble Artist was the name of uh, the guy that created a guy called Jamie Noble. Um, you can check it out on Facebook. He's got a group which is showing off the artwork and stuff. He also makes some kind of Dungeons and Dragons themed um, sort of cartoon. Um, uh, greetings cards as well uh, really nice guy yeah i had an interview with him and i'll probably put that up as a video as well uh and uh, that, that was a really interesting it's a game that's coming to kickstarter later this year and uh, i had a chat with um the guys from modifius about uh their fallout board game uh that looks they're not the board game sorry the miniatures game sorry i've got i've got something in my eye that's sending me nuts at the minute um that looks really interesting i didn't get the chance to demo it over the weekend as the stall as you can imagine, was really busy, but the miniatures look great. Um, the terrain they've got is all done by, I forget their name now, but the guys that do the the card, like the almost cardboard or plastic pre-printed slot together stuff. They had a Kickstarter recently for the game. Somebody will remind me in the chat what they're called. Um, they've, they've, they've done some um, stuff for that. And who else did I have a chat to? There's a game called random minds so for anybody that's kind of into their party games that uh, like um cards against humanity it, it's along that kind of line uh quite a kind of risky version it's available on amazon i think it's about 20 pound for it random minds if you head over and you can check that out um the guy that basically has created that game again really nice guy had a good long chat with him did a bit of an interview with him as well so hopefully i'll i'll kind of condense probably a few of these board gamey type things maybe into one video 
with kind of like two or three minute clips of the interviews of each of the different ones. Um, battle systems, I've just noticed there, Christian's mentioned. Yeah, it's battle systems that's making the um, the fallout terrain for them. Um, who else did I speak to? Um, my mind's gone blank now. I did chat to a few different people. I got some. I got a lot of photographs that you might have seen on Twitter or Instagram as well. Uh, but I'll I'll put some of those interviews up. So the Friday was a bit of a, a bit of a chat with people really. Um, then on the Saturday we got there really early for it for it opening. The queues were huge, absolutely kind of uh, backed right up on the Friday. Uh, it opens at half past nine. Uh, we managed, um, I, I actually also, I forgot to mention, I met up with Jay from Tale to Oddity on the Thursday night as well, and we went and had dinner together and had a drink afterwards. Um, that was really good. Uh, really nice to actually meet them face to face. The one thing, I don't think I actually mentioned this to him at the time, was that uh, he, he was taller than I expected. <laughs> when you see someone on video, you don't really get an, a, a kind of a view for how tall they are in real life. But yeah, he was taller than I expected. Uh, we met up again on the on the Friday morning. We managed to sneak in with our press passes in through the tournament entrance, so we didn't have to wait in the big queue, which was quite um, quite nice. And um, from a tournament point of view, there was a huge tournament area. So Fantasy Flight basically kind of dominated the tournament area. So there was things like there was a big section for Legends of the Five Rings card games. There was Star Wars Destiny, Star Wars X Wing, Star Wars Armada. I think on the Sunday there was a Star Wars Legion tournament. There was um, the Warhammer Sh uh, Shadespire uh, Grand Clash was there as well on the Saturday, I want to say. Maybe the Friday, Saturday, I can't remember which one it was. Um, and there was a big section in the far side where basically it's just hundreds and hundreds of tables where you can just do open gaming. So for anybody that wants to go and thinks, you know, well, well what is it to do? It's a great place to spend a little bit of time trying different things out. And then there's a huge area where you can just sit down and play board games. They have a board game library there. So you pay £10. This is a £10 deposit. You can go into the library, take a game out, sit and play the game with your friends or your family. When you finished it, take it back to the library. You can always get another one out, or you just get your £10 back. And I thought that was really nice. Somewhere where you could just sit and have this open gaming area. They also had an area where you could actually play full-scale war games as well. So there was a, a whole host of guys playing 40k and Age of Sigmar and... Uh, many other kind of six by four style games um let's just see what the chat is saying um uh mrs tony is saying did you get to play wreck and ruin i didn't tony every i i did want to i kept going past they had they had three tables doing the demos because it's on kickstarter at the moment i just saw this evening that they're fully funded now so it's definitely uh it's definitely going to be funded but it was busy all weekend. The guys obviously have got a great game there. It, it looked fantastic. Just never got a chance to play it. Uh, Michael said he's back. Nice to see you, mate. <laughs> Neil's saying he's going to stay. Uh, go on and I'll let you off, mate. Um, Michael is saying Parabellum's new game looks amazingly cool. I'll talk about that in a second because it was the first game that I demoed on the Friday morning. Um... Michael says he broke one of their L's when he saw it. I must admit, we did the demo game, my son Sam and I, and uh, I did knock over one of the uh, the houses of the terrain thing. That I, It looked like I'd smashed it. I felt really bad. And the guy said, no, no, it's fine. It all just clips together. It's so we can, um, it's so we can pack it down for traveling. I felt a little bit better then. But I'll come on to that one in a second. Um, Travis is saying it was an XLC. No, it was the battle system stuff. Christian was right. Uh, Adam saying the fallout of official terrain is really expensive. Yeah, considering the price of the battle system stuff, I thought it was quite expensive as well. I was quite surprised at that. Um, but it is a quick way, I suppose, to, to get your, your table up and running. Um, Tony saying the characters in that Heroes game are basically all the most stupid and useless party members. This was the, the Hero Master game. No one else wants to mess up all the time. Uh, oh, no one else wants as they, want, as they mess up all the time. It's clever and funny. Yeah, the way it was kind of explained to me was, if you can imagine, um, you're going into this kind of tavern to pick your adventurers to go delving into this dungeon, and these are the guys that, when you, you know, when you're picking a football team, and they're the guns, the guys that are left at the back, going, "Me, me, please pick me." These are the, these are your adventurers. It does seem really funny. Jimmy saying, "Did you play Warhammer Champions?" I didn't. I had an appointment to go and see them on the Thursday afternoon, but I got stuck in a in a whole host of traffic and missed my time slot. Um, so I didn't I didn't even get the fancy little goodie bag they were giving away as well. 
Um, but it, it looked relatively busy uh, during the expo. Um, Adam is seeing the Shades by a Champions from his local store, store, Martin Collins. Nice one. Travis is saying it's the outpost in Sheffield. Nice to see uh, somebody else winning for a change rather than there. Uh, is it is it is it Rui or Ru? I forget I forget how to pronounce his name. But rather than him winning all the time, it's quite nice to see him. Oh, there's the other guy as well, the other GW guy that keeps winning. I'm sure uh, Jamie will keep me right with the names in a second. So what I'll do is we'll just transfer over to here, and this is if I can click on, we can see. Uh, let's have a quick look at this. So this is Parabellum War Games. This is their uh, Facebook group, um, and this was the game that I demoed. The first thing that me and Sam demoed on the Friday morning. So because we snuck in the back way where it was quiet, there was nobody here. So I went straight over and had a, had a look. The 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 artwork for the game looks absolutely amazing. Imagine the very kind of Dark Souls esque theme to a fantasy game. Yeah, so imagine something like a cross between Kings of War, Warhammer Fantasy, um, with a Dark Souls type aesthetic. It really is uh, quite nice. You can see here these are the um, uh, I forget what the I forget what the different units are called, but these are kind of like long swords. Um, you can see there. So basically, how you've got them, you've got uh, individual models on on a on a four person tray, a little bit like um, Fantasy Flight did with. I uh, forget the name now. You know you know which one I mean, don't you? The one that's not uh, it's not not done very well. Oh, what's it called again? Rune Wars. That's the one. A little bit like Rune Wars, so you do take individual models off. Um, so you do take individual models off, so you, you can't really kind of um, like multi base them like you would do with Kings of War. Uh, but but they are very nice models. Um, we'll see what else we've got. No idea what these guys are called, basically, but uh, you can see here that they're um, nice big weapons. Different. I think the base sizes are pretty much standard, and it's just how many sort of units you get per base. Um, as you can see, I mean, these are not, not particularly amazing paint jobs on these particular ones, but it does show you the models. So some really uh, interesting uh, interesting models there. See if we've got anything about the artwork. So there's some knights here as well, which look quite nice. Um, there's a whole host of background information about them. Um, but essentially, let's go back to the main camera. Essentially, um, oh, what I would say is there's not... On first glance, there's nothing hugely um, kind of innovative about it. Um, you do start the game with all of your models off the board. So you don't kind of take turns deploying and then set up and have your battle. You basically, you imagine you have a unit card. For anybody that's played Star Wars Legion, where you have your little unit tokens, um, and you decide which order you're going to sort of um, activate them, you do, you do that in advance, so you have a card for each of your units, and you sort of stack them up in the order you want to activate them onto the board. Um, and your opponent does the same thing, so you don't know what he's going to activate or she's going to activate, and they don't know what you're going to activate. And you draw your first card, you then, basically, you then bring your model on, um, your unit on, from your edge. And I'm just kind of, um, somebody asking if they're resin minis, they're all plastics, actually, and I'll come on to that in a second. They're all they're definitely plastics, and it was it was plastics. He gave me a sample of one of the um of one of the models. Um, might be able to kind of show it on camera if I can remember where I've put it. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so you activate basically uh, entering the board from nothing on there, uh, which I guess is a bit different, but it felt like it was almost just different to be different. And one thing it took me a little while to get my head around as well was the fact that um, a lot of it is rolling low is good. So, for example, if something has a strength of three, um, a roll of a one, two, or three uh, is a success, a four, five, and a six is a fail. And that took me a little while of getting my head around. There was ones where I, I attacked one of Sam's units, rolled a, a boatload of dice, got loads of fives and sixes, felt like I'd done really well and realized they were all misses. They were, they were really the equivalent of ones and twos. And that felt like it was almost, um, it was just being different for being different sake. So what I would say is the miniatures are beautiful. The setting looks beautiful. The, um, the kind of the artwork and the feel of the game is really, really nice. Anybody that's looking for a big scale war game that 
a fantasy war game that isn't kind of Age of Sigmar or isn't Kings of War. I think you, the, the miniatures are beautiful. Um, but time will tell whether it's kind of going to be a success. The company Parabellum are based out of Cyprus. The, the, um, the kind of press information that they gave me says that they're part of a, a, a big... Um, I forget where they're located, but um, where their main sort of business is located. I think some of it's in the US, but it, <laughs> it almost sounded like it was kind of a huge big company with a lot of kind of um, sort of interests in um, real estate and things like that. And this was a little splinter off company. Far be it from me to say tax fiddle. <laughs> Who knows what it is? Um, but, it's, but what they've done is they're not going to Kickstarter. They've got all of their production is in-house. All of the plastics are sculpted in-house. All of the plastics are produced in-house as well. So they've really invested a lot of money in this game. Um, and it's coming in the next uh, few months. Um, they gave me their business card, asked me to get in touch to try and um, set something up about getting some more information for the future. So who knows? If they send me some stuff out, we'll do some more review things on the channel. Um, but again, it's, 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 a, it's a really nice looking game. It flows quite well. I just, I'm not sure if it brings anything different enough yet. And I'll see it yet because I, I had a demo. That's basically it. Um, so, yeah, that was really interesting. Let's have a quick look and see what we've got in the chat. Neil saying D&D has been voted top game still in Games Magazine. How do people feel about that? About D&D being voted the top game? I watched a video this morning that um, somebody in our um, our local club's WhatsApp group, uh, Lee will, Lee will know what I mean when I talk about this, um, and it was the original, it, it was a show called, I think it was called South of Watford. It looks like it's from the 80s. And it was essentially Ben Elton going to the original games workshop to speak to Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston about Dungeons and Dragons. And it was a little bit cringy, if I'm honest, but only because of it, it looked really dated. Um, but it just shows how long Dungeons and Dragons has been uh, sort of top dog, if you like. Uh, Phil was saying that they're cool knights. Yeah, they do look good. He says it should be good for Reaper sales. Uh, Jamie's saying it's Jay Claire and Rue James. That's exactly who I was trying to think of and couldn't remember the names. Uh, Lee's saying they're very nice. Yeah, the, 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 the model he gave me is definitely a plastic sprue um, and, the, and the, the felt plastic when I was playing with them. I don't know whether some of the bigger ones might be, uh, or, the, or some of the kind of the solo models, if you like, might potentially be, uh, be resin, but it's, they certainly all seemed plastic that I could see. Um, <laughs> Adam's saying, are oh, the big ones called ogres? I assume so. They look very ogre don't they? Uh, I'm just on the lucky and see if I can see anything because there was a really nice big centerpiece model. That was the one there. Let's uh, let's get that one up and we'll uh, we'll scroll across to that one. So this is on the Beast of War site, um, and it was this this big model here. So you you can see. I mean, this is a huge, big, strange looking thing, but it it definitely it felt plastic. It was hard to tell, but from what I could see, it was definitely. Um, there were some plastic miniatures. I think actually looking at this, this this is the demo board that I played on, and and this is the building that I knocked to bits. Uh, and these are actually the two armies that we we used in our in our demo game as well. So um, yeah, re really nice stuff. Um, we got Michael is saying that the the prototype of the games in resin the models with plastic when he sported them. Um, yeah, comp a trip to Cyprus will be, yeah, it'll be interesting if that can happen. We've got Sammy's just snuck in as well. So hi, Sammy, how are you doing? We're just having a bit of a chat about what me and you played, which was our first game, which was Conquest by Parabellum Miniatures. I don't know whether you've got anything to add, Sammy, from the chat and uh, what you think of it or what you thought of the, the game. The fact that I won obviously uh, might influence your decision. <laughs> what, what can I say? I don't beat you very often, mate. Um, Lee's saying it was very interesting, never the same trying to watch these games online though, actually taking part is different. Yeah. And they say, what size are those minis? They look pretty big. I would say that the, um, let me switch back across again. I would say, well, I would say that these guys are probably kind of heroic 32 mil scale, something like that. Certainly comparable with things like the, um, the Empire guys from, uh, probably a little bit bigger than Empire, somewhere between empire and stormcast i would say this thing here was huge i don't know whether you can, i'm assuming you can see that um, my, my cursor there this thing here i mean sam I'll probably um mention it as well because sam was playing this model it was probably a good six inches tall i would say 
six inches. No, I, I probably probably near about 10, 10, 11 inches tall. I would say it was quite a quite a big model, um, but hard to tell. So Sammy is saying, he said it was a decent game, but nowadays I think you need to have something special to stand out. Just didn't feel special from a mechanic point of view. Yeah, I think that kind of echoes what what I've just said as well. It was a good game. It played quite quite slick. I'm assuming there's lots of rules that we didn't get to find out about in the demo that we did, um, but it. It's not. It's not. I wouldn't say it's not. It's not groundbreaking. It, it'll. I think a lot of it will depend upon um, how good the miniatures are, what the price is, and the background. Whether the background gets people into it. But it. It definitely did have that. Um, and it was Sam that mentioned it at a time. Definitely had that very much Dark Souls feel to it. Uh, Nielsen back to square bases, rank and file. Square bases is an interesting. You mentioned that one because we've just had another update on Age of Sigmar two, and one thing they haven't done for Age of Sigmar two point zero is say that you have to have round bases. They've still left it very open ended, so that people with square bases from fantasy, there's still no need to change them. You can still play them in AOS. I did think at this point for AOS two that they would say right round bases now. That's it, but. They've even they've even changed the rule now, so you it's official that you measure from base to base when when playing the game. Everybody played it that way, but it was it was never worded that way in the rules. It's now definitely ruled, uh, ruled that way, but you can you can play with a square base anyway. So Jimmy's saying, is there space for another game like this? To be honest, mate, that that was exactly what I thought as well. I think if you're if you're a fantasy player and you love fantasy and you've got your fantasy stuff, you're probably still playing fantasy. If you're a fantasy player that's moved uh, away from fantasy but didn't want to come into Age of Sigmar, you're probably playing um, Kings of War. Um, and if you're not, you're probably playing Age of Sigmar. I'm not, I'm not sure where this fits yet. It's going to take something special to make it stand out, I would say. Um, Michael says, cool thing about D&D is it's so open to everything. Love it. Played a, a paladin in a party that had two in-game friends called Zinix and Zaxon. On a Lilliput Dwarf and one Half Giant. In combat, the Dwarf's role was being a blunt weapon for the Half Giant. Still laughing about the stupidity that happened. I've never... We, we had a brief chat in uh, the Facebook group the other day. I've never played a role-playing game before. I've never played Dungeons & Dragons. Um, it's, it's something I would like to put right at some point. Jamie sent me a link today to... I think it's... Is it called the Roll, Roll20 or Roll D20 um, website? which you can use to have an online version of kind of Dungeons & Dragons or role-playing game. It's something where I'm considering after Jamie kind of sent me the information, I might like to do as a live stream at some point and maybe get the Patreons involved as the other characters. So anybody that's kind of a Patreon can co come on and join in as part of the game and we'll live stream it for everybody else to view. So let me know. I'll tell you what, guys, anybody that is a Patreon, if you if you go to the Patreon page, Let's have a little chat about it in there and see what you think about it. Because uh, it was something Jamie suggested to me a day, and I, it, it does sound really interesting. I need to do a bit more digging about it. I didn't get a chance to have a look while I was at work today. Um, but it, it does sound, from the little bit I read, it sounded really interesting. So let's see what, um, what you think of that one. Um, Jimmy's saying that the, regarding the AOS square bases, reading between the lines, it reads, choose any base, but expect to be spat on if you're playing anywhere else but your own dining table. They've definitely decided they don't want to kind of kick out everybody with square bases. They've already got rid of some of the kind of legacy armies, if you like, by not including them now. Um, I just thought by this stage, three years down the line, they would have just said, you know, you have to play with the models, with the bases that come with the models. Round. I mean, they don't. I don't think they even specify a size. They've left it down to the point so that it says... Um, there's a recommended base size for each miniature, and tournament organizers might choose to use those recommended base sizes, um, but they've left it wide open, basically, for people to use what they like. So, um, so yeah, that was Parabellum Miniatures, or Par Parabellum War Games, I should say, and uh, their game, Conquest. Next thing Sam and I did was we went to play, if I remember rightly, we went to have a game of X-Wing 2.0. Now, we've played X-Wing before, myself, Sam and myself. Um, 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just reading Neil's comment there. He was stirring with square bases. No, I completely know what you mean, mate. This this game, the same as um, Kings of War, needs square bases. I was just a bit surprised of the AOS bit. Um, so yeah, so me and Sam played X-Wing many years ago when it first came out. Uh, haven't played for a little while, um, but we decided to dive in and get a demo of X-Wing 2.0 just to see what the changes they've made were like. Uh, and what I would say, if Sammy's still around, I'm sure he'll chime in as well and, and say what he thinks. But the game is still still just as fun as it always was. Um, I wouldn't say it's changed massively from a, a gameplay point of view. There was a couple of things that have changed. So uh, tell me if I've got this wrong. But originally, I think when you used to focus, it was an automatic focus. So if you've got the little eyeball symbol on the dice and you had a focus token, it automatically changed to a hit. I think the way it is now, if you focus, um, you can re-roll that dice, which is kind of taking some of the power out of it. The other one was as well is, I think if you have a dodge token now, um, Sam might remind me if I've got this wrong, if you have the dodge token or the evade token and you roll, roll an evade on the dice, you, you, can't, you can't evade a critical hit, but you can use it to add an evade to um you can change your focus oh I forget now but it was something like that <laughs> my mind's going black a bit it didn't feel too different but it felt like it took some of the power out of those ev evades and focus um the, the barrel roll thing never really cropped up in the game we played but it did explain how it now um it's a little bit more limited so it's not um it's not a sort of it's not too overpowered um, it was interesting not having all of the points values on the cards. Um, it's, it made the cards a little less cluttered, and it'll obviously make them easier to update once the app's up and available. Um, I, ju I, I would just say it, it seemed to work pretty well. I really enjoyed it, and it, it, it definitely got me thinking about getting my old X-Wing stuff out again, having a game with Sammy when he's over, and also possibly buying in with the new core sets when they come out. Um, Tony is saying Atlantic Miniatures had some stunning miniatures of Giants and Ogres. Born on Kickstarter soon, really smooth, clean resin with tons of detail. There was a lot of really nice miniatures there this weekend. I remember seeing those Atlantic miniatures ones. Um, it's just such a, a busy market for that kind of thing, isn't it? Uh, Gary Hollandale just joined us as well. Evening, Gary. No apologies um, for, for being late. It's just always good to have you here at whatever point it is. Adam is saying, come on, <laughs> enough about the games. What kind of food was available? So, what for kind of food? Uh, Thursday evening, we went to G TGI Fridays. Myself, Sam, and Jay from Tabletop Oddity. We went to TGI Fridays. I had rack of ribs. Um, to be honest, there was a real mixture of food. There was some nice kind of pizzas, like sort of um, wood-fired pizzas. There was some... They have a, um, like a street food um, uh, thing outside, which had everything from kind of fish and chips to kind of oriental noodles and things. That was quite a nice change. Certainly better than the sandwiches you get at the um, at the XL in London. There's Subway in there. There's obviously Starbucks and stuff. There was a million different kind of types of uh, food um, sort of vans and uh, options, baked potatoes and stuff. Nice choice of food. <laughs> um, Michael says, doesn't matter what kind of food, better than Bugman's than in Warhammer World, and I haven't been there. Bugman's food is actually pretty good, Michael. You need to get yourself over there. We've got Nurglin in. He's saying, yep, caught you. Nice to see you, Nurglin. Well in, buddy. Remind me who you are again. I, 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 know, you're, I know you're in the Facebook group, and I, can, I forgot what your real name is versus that. Um, Sam saying that for X-Wing, it's a genius idea with the app. Makes optimizing the game and allowing certain builds for tournaments so much easier. Hopefully, they put some effort into it. Yeah, I can imagine with the Fantasy Flight, I've got a bit of experience with the apps now, so hopefully they'll, get it, they'll, they'll do a good job. Um, Jamie's saying, uh, there's some rules about some stuff. Wizard, Space Magic, Magic did some stuff with some rules. Reviewing Masterclass right there. <laughs> there you go, mate. What can I say? I couldn't remember. <laughs> it, it feels like a million years ago. What can I say? Uh, Michael's saying, Spiel only have pretzels and slices of pizza so you can saw wood with it. <laughs> <laughs> Neil saying, any reports on mold lines? I'm happy to report, Neil, that mold lines were clearly uh, not visible while I was there. Other people must pay a lot more attention to them than I do. 
<laughs> um, no, Glenn says, Alex, I knew, I couldn't remember who it was. Alex. I know I saw you've posted something today on Facebook and I knew I'd seen the name Nurgle and I couldn't put two and two together who it was. Nice to see you, Alex, mate. Welcome in tonight. Um, uh, we've got, this is Azriel Vids. This is back north safely. Well done. Great to meet you on the Mythic Games booth. Ah, we've got Az in tonight. Nice to see you, Az. We haven't quite, we haven't got to Solomon Kane yet. We're about to talk about that one in a little bit. So you've timed that one perfectly. Nice to see you, mate. Um, <laughs> you, you prefer Nurglin. That's fine. Then we'll Nurglin at least. And, um, Michael's saying, um, he has, he, oh, he has been in Bugman's. It was a horrible experience. Truly disgusting food. I, I had a burger. I think I've had a burger once there. That's all, that's all I can say. Um, and Neil is saying that the Bugman's food is mahusive. Well done. Mahusive food. So then, in the interest that we've got Az in tonight, so anybody, uh, Az is um, the communications guy for our communications manager, communications guru for Mythic Games. And Mythic Games are the company that are um, coming up soon with the Solomon Kane Kickstarter. So we'll transfer across to this so we can see some of the images of uh, Solomon Kane. So for anybody that isn't aware, it's... Um, Mythic Games is also the company that recently did the Joan of Arc Kickstarter as well. As you know, that was uh, hugely successful, uh, and I'm not sure when it's due to deliver, but I know it's not too far away. And they also had what is probably one of the nicest miniatures I've ever seen, and I use the word miniature very loosely. They had a dragon for um, uh, for Joan of Arc, which is pr it was absolutely beautiful. It was huge, and it was fantastically painted, um, so it's really, really good. Um, so Solomon Kane, I was really lucky to have on Saturday afternoon. Um, let me get this picture up because this is essentially this is a rough kind of copy of what the what the demo boards look like. I know it's been updated quite a few times since this one as well. Um, but basically, what you play in this game of Solomon Kane is uh, it's a co-op game, so it was up to four players. I, I'm not sure if it's going to be any more than that in the finished game, but certainly the demo we played was a four-player game. And each of you play kind of, I forget the, the real terms, as might be able to help me out here, but it, you, in, you play a sort of, um, a part of Solomon Kane. So uh, one plays Courage, one plays Strength, I think it is. Uh, I forget what the other two are, but we'll, we'll, as we skip through here, I'm sure we'll see some more pictures that will remind me here. Courage, Temperance, Prudence, and Justice. That was it. So what you can see here is you've got these different kinds of dice. And what these dice allow you to do is they allow you to do certain actions. So for example, this one, you need the heart symbol, the fear symbol, the circle. And if you get those three dice, you can then uh, fight with the power two. And what basically happens is you decide, because you're all working cooperatively, you, you decide in what order you're going to activate. Um... And what you can choose to do is one person might say, well, you know, I've got, for example, I've got strength at this point in time, or my character is strength. We're not fighting anything at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll go first because then I can roll my dice and I can donate dice to the other players to allow them to help them get their different actions off. If we can see if there's anything. Um... So for compassion here, for example, you've, we've got a heart and a fear token. This lets you um, explore which basically um, lets you open areas, uh, which basically helps progress the story. And it was just a really, really interesting mechanic of everyone working together, discussing in which order everybody wanted to go to be able to, to move Solomon Kane across the board and basically achieve an, an outcome. And what, what the outcomes were was they were basically, uh, you had to... You had to basically get um, light tokens onto the next part of the encounter, and at, at the end of the encounter, if if you achieved the right amount of light tokens, the story went in one direction. If you didn't achieve the right amount, but you got some of them, it went in a slightly different direction. Um, and basically, if you didn't get any light tokens, there was almost a third, um, a very unhappy version of the story. And this basically was almost imagine a bit uh, kind of like a fighting fantasy choose your own adventure the way the story unfolds and depending upon how successful you were it would lead you down different paths um and i've probably not done it justice <laughs> but the, the game was really really interesting both sam and i played it with um with a guy called andy who demoed it Andy did a fantastic job 
of demo in it. We also had somebody else who uh, jumped in at the start of the game and played alongside us as well. Um, the miniatures were fantastic, really, really nice. Let me just kind of bring some of these up. So these were the kind of the, I forget the name. I, this wasn't the ghost. The ghost was one of the other miniatures, but these were the, um, I'll, let, I'll let us remind me what these are called when it comes up. I've just noticed in the, in the chat there as well, he's saying that they're basically, they're the cardinal virtues of Solomon's Puritan beliefs. So for anybody that knows the Solomon Cain background, the story, um, for anyone that doesn't know, it was written by the same person who wrote the Conan books as well. Um, Sam is saying, not for the faint heart though, it's bloody hard. It was extremely fun. So he was a fan of the sort of gothic style, he self who was, so it was right down his alley. Um, yeah, we had a really good time. We really enjoyed playing it. So here is the Solomon Kane miniature. Let me just um, flick that one up. Again, using the Beasts of War site here for the images. Um, you can see they're beautifully painted as well. Um, this is with this, the Solomon Kane um, model. You can see here, just um, this was the Traveller. In, in, the, in the game we played, we had to save this Traveller in the, in the second part of the encounter. Um, and we've got a bit of artwork there as well. But yeah, what I would say is there was just, it was just such a real thematic game. I, I've, it reminded me of, um, how can I explain it? It, it? it was like, it was just like playing a choose your own adventure, like playing a story, but it was just the fact that you all had to work together to really decide which way you wanted that kind of encounter to go. You, you could, you could take your virtues and you could, you could kind of exchange it in, I think it was for three dice, you could take your virtue to the board and that would block away the ghosts and stop them kind of attacking Solomon and protect him. There was just so many different tactical kind of nuances to the game. There was a lot of choice, a lot of options, but it, but it wasn't overwhelmingly difficult. It was just, um, it, it was a challenge though. We got to the end uh, of our encounter. We managed to succeed, but we only had um, two of the um, darkness cards and the darkness cards come out after every after each virtue takes an act action. The darkness cards basically tell you that something happens in the game, and they're almost like a counting down the deck. Once you run out of darkness cards, it's the end of the encounter. So, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Looking forward to um, it's coming to Kickstarter June the fourteenth, I believe. As might uh, might remind me if he's still around. Um, I'm, I think it's June the fourteenth, so it's one to watch out for. Um, and really uh really enjoyed it. It, it it was something i was going to kind of make a video on anyway but to have a little chat about my experience i guess we kind of got into it a little bit tonight but um yeah watch out for it june june the oh well, that's june the fifth one or something else i'm looking to see if we've got any dates here for for it i'm pretty sure it was june the 14th though if i remember right so um yeah and and Randomly, which I found out on, on Saturday when I was chatting to Az, uh, Mythic Games are actually based in Newcastle. They're about five minutes away from where I live as well. So um, nice to have something in the northeast as well. June the 12th, so close. <laughs> I kind of believe I missed it by two days. I still, I still would have got there. I wouldn't have been too early though, at least. Um, let's see what everybody in the chat is saying. We've got to catch up. Um... <laughs> Michael is saying if you like fat sponges the burgers are nice in Bugman's <laughs> I, can't, I can't disagree with that one um, uh, we got Tony saying the Joan of Arc stuff looks awesome up close and that dragon is mahoosive can't wait for this one to land Yeah, did, am, I, am I right in saying that you backed this one Tony I think I remember you telling me uh, we've got Shaggy Wargamers come in nice to see you Shaggy how you doing bud um, Alex is saying try and watch the rest tomorrow but keep up the excellent work Andy was in two minds about Solomon. I must say all the best work beckons. Well, if you watch this back later on, um, Alex, if you're not around, um, I didn't know much about it until I played the demo and, and I was really, really impressed with it. Um, we got... <laughs> Neil is saying, I ain't given no one dice. It's a cooperative game, Neil. You need to learn to share. You need to be able to share amongst friends. It was really interesting, actually, because you, you can only donate one dice to each person, to each of the virtues. So you really had to decide which dice you wanted to donate, which one you needed yourself. You can put some into reserve to play the next turn as well. So there's definitely that kind of, you know, I need this, but you need it as well. Who shall I give it to? It, it, it made it really interesting and gave you lots of options of things to do. 
Um, we've got, if I can dance down this again, uh, Michael saying, nobody touch my dice. Um, yeah, the blue mini is the ghost of Gideon. Uh, Shaggy saying that that terrain and those minis look awesome. The, the minis are fantastic. It was really nice to see them up close. I'd seen a few of the images online, um, especially from the, from the Beasts of War videos as well, but it was really nice to see them up close. Um, Phil saying, nice style of game. Yeah, we said June the 12th. Uh, as I said, thank you. It was great to meet you and you as. Thank you very much. And look forward to sharing a game with you at some point. So, yeah, if you're ever looking for a game and you're looking for a gaming group or something, just give me a shout. I'm sure I can introduce you to a few people for, for games as well up in the Northeast. Um, Jamie saying, play a test party in Mythic. <laughs> I think what Az said actually when I was chatting to him was they're, they're setting up a studio there. But he said, I'm sure he said it's probably only big enough to get about four people in. So, so it might be a very small party, but it'll be a party nonetheless. <laughs> um, as is saying, yeah, for sure, James, after the campaign. Uh, Tony saying, I thought Solomon Kane was a brave choice for a game, but everything I see about attempts me in the back of it really seems to knit the theme into the game really well. What I, what I would say, Tony, is, it is it's, it's probably one game that I've played that is, it feels like there's the theme, and then the game has been built around the theme. It's not, I've got this game, how do I wedge this theme into it? it everything about the game felt really thematic. The guy that sat down to play with us kind of he kind of hovered around as, as Andy was explaining the game to us. And he said, Do you mind if I watch? I'm I'm a huge Solomon Kane fan. I've read all of the books. I'd love to know kind of um like just I want to know whether it's something that really kind of reflects it. So he came and sat down, he played the first probably three or four turns with us, and then just went, Yep, yeah, right, seen enough. Absolutely love it. I'll be back on this. And he kind of just wandered off halfway through the game. Absolutely loved it. Um, so that that was from somebody that was a big fan. So I think they're I think the Kickstarter will fund really quickly. I think um, they've they've got a great game on their hands. So I think it's kind of uh, it's one that wasn't necessarily on my radar, but I, I think it is now. Um, Neil is saying play a test party. Mark saying party. He'll travel a party. I tell you what, you lot are very predictable. You know, you start talking about a couple of pork pies and a bit of beer, and all of a sudden you want to travel the end of the country. <laughs> Uh, Nurgle in the scene, he seems to remember Solomon Kane movie coming out just after Van Helsen. It's funny, we were just talking about this actually when we were playing the game as well. Um, I think I think the, the, the Solomon Kane movie wasn't particularly very good, sadly. But I think Van Helsen, whilst it was a kind of a fun popcorn type movie, they almost based the Van Helsen character on Solomon Kane. So it was, uh, it was, I think that was where it became even more crossed over. Uh, Adam saying it reminds him of the Malifaux minis with the gothic setting. Yeah, it's got that feel about it as well, I would say. There's definitely that kind of, there's some strange kind of, it's very um, otherworldly. Yeah, really good. Um, Nurgling is saying, back the games for the miniatures, never play anymore, don't have time. Well, Nurgling, I would imagine this will be one of those games, I think, that, that'll, one of these Kickstarters at least, that will unlock, I think, a lot of bits and pieces as it goes through. Um Certainly from the miniatures that you see on here, um, the, there was only so many of them were in the demo that we used. And from, I think what, what I also saw as well, and I don't know if I can see any pictures of this, but a really nice little kind of design mechanic. And I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it in any of these pictures. I'm frantically searching for it. But if we see some of this artwork here, let's uh, bring that artwork up and we'll switch across to it. So what you see here is this kind of artwork of this battle. On the back of the of the um, the end, is it the encounters or each kind of if you think about them as if it, the game is split up into sort of missions, the one we played was almost kind of like three sections, um, and the backs of the cards are basically these uh, these images kind of split across the back of the cards. So as they were laid out along the side of the board, it had this big kind of um, sort of nice landscape of artwork across it. And Andy explained when he was demoing that, that some of the encounters or some of the sort of um, missions, if you like, that you'll play might be across 10 kind of um, different sections. So you end up with this really nice kind of landscape of artwork across it. And it's almost like um, there's points in the story where you can break and kind of, um, you can kind of take a little bit of a break. So I've done five sections of it. I'll have a bit of a break now. We'll come back tomorrow and play the next five or something. It, it just, it was, it was a little kind of, Little bits like that that just really seem to uh, really seem to 
to stand out and just give it that little something different. Um, <laughs> Michael saying he hates parties. I can't believe Michael as a Dutchman with 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 the Dutch um, expectation on partying of a certain way. I can't believe you hate parties. Uh, as I say, in the Solomon Cain books were written in the twenties. Scary to think that you know what, what are we like all this time later. Um, probably nearly a hundred years ago, and those those stories are still kind of uh, capturing imagination now. Tony saying, "Yeah, he backed Joan of Arc for everything, but the RPG stuff really reassured that money was well spent." Yeah, I must admit, I, seeing them in the flesh on there at the weekend, there was some fantastic stuff from that Joan of Arc stuff. Anybody that's that's backed it, you 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 run for a treat when that one delivers. Um, Adam is saying, "By the way, can you?" Can you scroll the chat on the stream? I don't think I can scroll the chat because this is uh, this is basically linked to almost like the the web link of, of where the chat is. So if you you should be able to see the chat down the right hand side of your screen if you've got it on a on a laptop or or something like that. If you've got it on your phone, I'm not sure how it works, mate. Um, Jimmy saying <laughs> we're bringing pies into it now. <laughs> Solomon Kane is like the original witch hunter, Puritan demon hunter. Yeah, it's 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 just such a kind of evocative kind of image, really. It's it's real old school fantasy, but without but without the wizards and the and the dwarves kind of thing. Really, really interesting background. Uh, oh man, would love a pie, cheese on sticks and foiled oranges. I I remember them from parties when I was a kid. You you, you also used to get hot dogs on on the sticks as well, wasn't it? Hot dogs and cheese and pickled onions. Or did I just go to to posh kids parties? Is that what it was? Um. Michael saying, no wise cracking on my favorite Dutchman from fantasy, yeah? Abraham Van Helsing. Uh, as I say, oh, he, he's trying to get a link for us, but he can't get it at the minute. No worries, as I'll tell okay, you what you could, what you can do, as if you, if you, uh, if you want to join, we've got a Facebook group as well. So Blackjack Legacy Facebook group, feel free to, to, to come across to there and, uh, and share any images in there as well. Um, we recently this week hit our 300 members, which was, which was really nice to see as well. It's kind of um, almost the, the the kind of the diehards, I would say. Um, people that have been around since the channel first started last year, or year before it is now, I should say. Um, yeah, really good. And he's saying you can see it; it's just that it stuck in the video. I, I think it must it must just scroll slightly. There's a little arrow at the bottom there, isn't there? I wonder if I can uh, if I screw on that. Does that do anything? I think I'm just going to screw it up, mate. If that's what happens. Um, what I can probably do is, oh, I wonder if I switch across to my left monitor, and then I switch back to the main camera. Does it? It might refresh and it might catch up. Is that uh, is that any better? That might help. We'll see what that does. Um, Neil is saying Solomon, a hater. Have we not had enough hate this week? A hater for what? I must. Have, I think I've missed the reference there, Neil. You'll have, you'll have to tell me what it is. Jimmy saying cocktail sausages. I went to really posh parties. Oh, see, I'm I'm from a mining village. We didn't have posh parties. Nurgling saying, I always thought a miniature game on the Witchfinder General uh, would be cool. Burn those witches, conduct a bit of torture, the innocents, and be a terrible human being. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised there's not been more about that kind of um that kind of era really. When you think about um, you know. All of that, you know, the the kind of the the burning of witches and then um, and drowning them and all that kind of stuff. It, I'm surprised there hasn't been more around that background. I've got I've got no doubt that there's been many RPGs on it, but um, yeah, you never really see it in the miniature games too much, do you? I need to understand how to scroll that down for you now, uh, Adam. I, I've never noticed that before, not scrolling. So there's a little blue arrow at the bottom, but I just I don't know how to actually click on it. So I apologize that the chat on the screen isn't scrolling down fast enough. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll attempt to keep going anyway and, uh, and see. So I'll, I'll, try and, I'll try and keep it up. I'll try and keep it up. So um, Mark is saying, not sure burning witches and pies are my sort of party. To be honest, have you ever been to a, to a pie and burning witch party? Can you really knock it until you've tried it? Um, Tony's saying Spanish Inquisition, the board game. Yeah, that's it. 
Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition, so one day it'll just appear. That's what it is. Uh, <laughs> Jamie saying color coat. I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't born that side of the water, Jamie. I was born your side of the of the time. To be fair, I only I only moved here in later years. So yeah, I'm I'm from south of the Tyne originally. Um, Mark saying, "Who am I kidding?" Jimmy saying, "We burnt the kids from the mining villages and we we ate them." That's not very nice, now is it? There's me thinking, uh, thinking I've got a nice bunch of folks in here tonight, and that's the kind of abuse I get from you. Eh? <laughs> so, what else did I play while I was there? I actually had my first game of Star Wars Legion. Believe it or not, believe it or not, I, I, I've got my Legion core set. I'm 99% of the way through painting it, and I still hadn't had a game of it yet. So Sam and I had a game of Legion and thoroughly enjoyed it. That was pretty good. I also had a game of Fallout, the board game, from Fantasy Flight Games. And I mentioned earlier on, it was something that I, I'd been interested in. I, I wanted to try it, um, but it was good to get a chance to get a demo of it. And what I would say is what... Well, I was a bit disappointed in it, if I'm honest. And I'll tell you the reason I think I was disappointed in it was because I think it was badly demoed, if I'm honest. We had a guy who, who tried to take us through the demo, basically went, oh, you need this, you need that, try this. They all give it a go and see how you get on. And we were just a bit lost a little bit. We tried to, uh, we tried to ask somebody to come over and help us. They came over. We were already kind of a couple of turns into the game by this point. And he said, well, well you haven't got any of these bits on the board and you haven't got that, and that's in the wrong place. So... It felt an overly complicated game for what it was, but I think, and, and I wouldn't say it was a bad game, I would say I had a bad experience playing it, and I think it was down to the way it was demoed to us. So, yeah, I, I was a bit disappointed in Fallout, the board game. I've been interested in it because you can play it solo. I love the, um, the Fallout universe. I really hoped it would be sort of something, something better than that. I'd like to try it again before I kind of sort of... Um, Cast it aside forever if you like, but yeah, it was all down to the demo. Conversely, I would say, as, uh, uh, and if Az is still around, Andy, the guy that demoed um, Solomon Kane to us, was kind of it was textbook. This is how you demo a game. Really engaging guy, showed us everything, gave us enough rules to start playing, helped us as we went along. That's how you demo a game. The, the Fantasy Flight guy, I got the impression that somebody had told him how to play the game about an hour before we came along. And he was kind of trying to pick it up as well. It wasn't, it wasn't the best. So I think that was one of the problems that we had with that. Um, what we got. Nurgle is saying, Hell, whilst we're at it, let's make a Wicker Man miniature game. You're going to have a little model of Nicolas Cage running away from a town full of mental villagers and a Burning Man model to pop him. <laughs> to be honest, um, I've just saw an advert for Alton Towers, the theme park in the UK, and they've got a Wicker Man ride opening this year. So who knows? Who knows? Um, do you know what it is that that's bugging me now? Why we can't uh, why we can't scroll that? You'll have just seen that moving around while I, while I was trying to uh, to fix it. I apologies. I don't know why it's not scrolling tonight. It normally does. Um, what I'll do is I'll just I'll just I'll just keep refreshing it for you, and, and it should just uh, it should just keep it up. So apologies that it's uh, it's it's not quite working as it should. Um, right, what else we got? We've got... Adam is saying he's read it on his phone as you're on the big telly again. That's it now, I'm, uh, I'm in the lounge today. <laughs> uh, Neil saying he escaped his mining village and bask in cocktail sausages. <laughs> We've got Revenant Tabletop Gaming in. Nice to see you, buddy. This is another uh, guy who I managed to meet at the weekend, so... I was actually sitting um, with Sammy about to play uh, X-Wing 2.0, and this gentleman basically said, excuse me, are you the guy with the YouTube channel? So it was really good to see him, and it turns out that he, uh, he also lives about half an hour away from me as well, so you go all the way to Birmingham to meet somebody who lives down the road. So nice to see you, mate. Welcome, welcome to the live stream tonight. Um, you see, there's a reason to hate Dutch parties, mate. And Jamie is saying it with exclamation marks, your first game. Yeah, I, I hadn't actually played it yet, mate. I've read the rules. I knew how to play it. I'd never actually pushed any miniatures around yet. So, yeah, it was my first experience of it. Um, what did I think? Rebel troops are very shooty. 
Well, I played the Imperials and Sam played the Rebel Troops. And I would say that, um, as you do when you're playing a demo, we basically rushed Vader and uh, Luke into each other and had a battle at one side of the board. My speeder bikes, I think, um, wrecked one of his um, one of his troops pretty early on. Um, but it was just, it was just a great game. I really, really enjoyed it. I'll be honest, it was, um, it was really enjoyable, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing again. I bought a little bit of Star Wars Legion scenery. Um, we'll be playing next time when Sam's over in a, in a couple of weeks. He's off, he's off to download. Uh, this weekend download festival so when he's over the weekend after we'll probably have a have a proper game with uh with my stuff and, and play a full game out but i really enjoyed it i can see me playing a bit more of it um michael is saying when you can ask mantix andy meachin for a walking dead demo he can guide you through as you read in the comic i'll have to check that sometime um i had a chat with the guys from um uh, from mantic at the weekend as well about um some future future plans for mantic um, they were very, very nice, uh, very kind to share some of their, their confidential plans. So I won't be saying anything more than that. Um, but yeah, stay tuned to the channel. Later on this year, we'll have some some interesting stuff coming up. Um, Nurgling is saying, when's the Skyrim miniature game coming out? Do you know what? I, again, it, would it end up just being another kind of generic fantasy game, do you think, with such a big license as, as, um, as Skyrim? Would it just become another Conquest Kings of War thing or something like that, do you think? Or do you think I think they'd have to make it a board game, wouldn't they? Um We've got um, Tony saying a bad demo can totally kill a game. It's quite good, but does have its flaws and the scoring system is broken. Yeah, I, I mean I felt I fell for the guy. He's obviously been asked to demo a game that he knows nothing about. Um, but it's not the kind of game that you can just kind of pick up on the fly. It did put me off, and I, I probably won't buy it now, if I'm honest. But it just it just shows the power of a of somebody um, who is good at demoing games versus somebody that's not really sure what they're doing. Um, we've got Dustin has just tuned in from work as well, still on his first coffee, all the way over in New Zealand. Nice to see you, buddy. Hope you're well. Um, Reverend, saying the game you're talking about is different to the Fallout Wasteland Warfare miniatures game, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, the the Fallout Wasteland Warfare is made by Modiphius, and that's a miniatures kind of skirmish game. The game I played is made by Fantasy Flight, and it's a board game with kind of hex tiles. It does have miniatures, but they move around the board um, almost just as components, really, rather than kind of a, a fighting mechanic type thing. Uh, Mark says, the chat's working now. Yeah, I've just saw it start scrolling up. I don't know why you decided to have a bit of a moment, but it's working now. Um Jimmy says he liked it. Didn't like all the cards though. Codex is easier. Um, I quite, I quite liked the cards actually. But I think maybe for the demo version that we didn't have a lot of cards out. I think the fact that you've got a a three by six game rather than a four by six gives you that little kind of six inch window along the back of your board to have all of your cards. Um, I, I can see a lot of it moving to apps in the future though. I'll be honest. I can see it moving that way. Um, Nurgland saying if you fancy Fallout or if you enjoy Fallout type stuff, comedy recommend you pick up Westman from Thunderchild Miniatures absolutely awesome models, I'll have to check that one out mate uh, Adam saying when are they releasing the Bucket of Ewoks for Legion you think they will? I, can't, I, I honestly can't see Ewoks being part of it I mean they've got no ranged weapons have they, are they, are they going to start throwing spears across the board? I'm not sure. It'd be nice though from an aesthetic point of view, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> Michael Lissian sounds like a good snack, a bucket of, a bucket of Ewoks. Uh, Tony is saying he hopes there's Ewoks and Wookiees for Legion. There has to be Wookiees, doesn't there? I think all of the, like we've, we've seen in Star Wars lore now that there's kind of, um, there's the whole planet where, where Chewbacca comes from. Is it, I always forget how to pronounce it, Krush, Krushan or Kurishan? Kurishan seems to ring a bell. It's something like that anyway. Um, Jamie saying he used to design board games that I took an arrow to the knee <laughs> oh how very droll <laughs> um, doesn't he saying he's well he's got a ton of painting done over the long weekend nice to see you mate always I always, I miss your updates mate of, of, if you, of, I've only managed to get through 2000 miniatures this weekend the amount of stuff you got through was unbelievable <laughs> Uh, Adam is saying he's not a Star Wars fan, but for painting episodes one or three, it could offer some good minis. Yeah, definitely, definitely. 
Uh, we've got Cry uh, Kyle in as well. Kyle just snuck in there at the, as well. I'm, I don't know whether you've been hanging around in the background not speaking or not. Kyle is the guy that I, I played Silver Tower and Go Chosen with a couple of weeks ago. And he's saying it's Kashak or Ka Kashak. There you go. We're, we're getting a Star Wars lesson tonight. You're both right, guys. I was there. I was close. It was in my head. I just couldn't pronounce it. That's all. Oh, let me get a drink. My throat's dry now. So, what else did we play? God, there was so much I kind of forgot now. So, yes, we played X-Wing 2.0. We played Legion. We played Fallout. We played Solomon Kane. We played... Um, what did I mention? Conquest. We also played the football game. The Minty's Bootful football game that we did with Alex. That was excellent. Um, we also just... Got a cup of coffee and chilled outside for a bit. What? It, it, I mean, as you can imagine, in a big convention hall, it was red hot. It was so warm, and then we went outside for some for, for some fresh air, and it was even warmer outside. It was so hot. Um, but I've, we've we've briefly been chatting in the in the uh, in the Facebook group as well from the kind of the guys that were that were there at the weekend. So I managed to see uh, Tim, who was there as well. Nice to see Tim. I managed to see Tony. I managed to see where are we? Um, Reverend Tabletop Gaming. Apologies, mate. I, I forgot your first name. Um, in my head, it's in my head. It might be Andy, but I could be wrong. Um, who else did we see? We saw Josie from um, Green Stuff Games. I met Andy Two D Six for the first time. Never met him before. He was a nice guy. I met Anth from the Gibsons. Um, if anybody hasn't checked out Anth's channel. It's called The Gibsons. He does a lot of um, Dungeons and Dragons stuff. He's a guy from Middlesbrough as well. Um, really nice guy. Who else do we see? I'm trying to go through my list now. Met Alex as well, who I just mentioned before. Um, I also met, and this is killing me that I've forgotten the gentleman's name now. Oh, man. My mind's gone blank. I told you I was terrible with names. We met on... Oh. Can't even believe I'm really I, re I really can't believe I've forgotten his name now. I'm gonna to have to try and search for it in Twitter. This is awful. He's from his Twitter is E H Gaming. I mentioned that a little while ago um, on the Facebook group. That I can't believe I've forgotten it now. This is terrible. It's not nice, is it, when you forget somebody's name? Um, let me let me search for it. Um, as I mentioned before, in my defence, I do have a terrible memory for for games, uh, for names rather. Um, no, that's not good. I forgot it anyway. So yeah, I met I met up with another guy from Twitter who we've been chatting for a little while. He was very kind about about the channel, saying he was kind of um, um, first saw the Walking Dead stuff was kind of inspired to do his own stuff from there. So that was really nice. He also has a, a shop in York as well. So anybody wanting to check out e, EH, so Echo Hotel Gaming, um, he's, his website basically he's got is a store and he also um, does book, uh, game reviews as well. So it's worth checking out some of his game reviews. Um, really, really nice guy, really friendly. Bought me and Sam a coffee as well. Uh, so it was nice to catch up with a few people. So yeah, it was really nice to catch up with a lot, a lot of viewers from the channel, a lot of people from the Facebook group, people that I've been chatting to online. Really nice to meet them all. And I, and I think we might try and sort something out for next year. So if anybody's interested, we might try and get a bit of a get-together next year as well. So that might be, might be an interesting uh, thing to, to try and plan. Um, let's see how we're doing. Oh, the chat's bouncing around again. Um, yeah, Revenant's saying the, the, the Modifius game looked great. Uh, Kyle says he's been lurking in the background. How's that painting coming on, Kyle? Are you, are you, are you doing your sister's? Uh, how are they getting on? Is it is it Sisters of Cain? My mind's gone blank now. It's been a long day. Ant, that was his name. Apologies, Ant. I knew you began with an A. It wasn't Andy. It was Ant. Uh, it was really nice to meet you the weekend, mate. And and as I mentioned as well, if you're ever up for a game of Walking Dead, just shout, um, and we'll, we'll have a game at some point. Um, Kashik, there you go. That's how you pronounce it, Kashik. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, Adam says, black t-shirts and manly sweat. I feel bad for your nostrils. One thing I would say, and this maybe comes back to the should you go to Salute or should you go to UK Games Expo, is how can I say this politely and, and politically? I would say that there was, there was a nicer atmosphere, aroma 
at the UK Games Expo than there was at Salute. It, there seemed to be a, a lot more, um, there was a lot more families, there was a lot more people that you, that you, and this has been very judgmental, but war gamers have a, um, a stereotype, if you like, and but people at the expo, board gamers, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say fit that stereotype. Can I say that without really sounding bad? Do you know what I mean? Like it, it wasn't, um, it wasn't that kind of gamer funk tournament kind of smell around the place. It was actually quite nice. Um, Nurglin saying, make sure you hit the like button, guys. I am always happy for people to hit the like button. Don't worry about that. Thanks, thanks for the nudge there, Nurglin. Um, yeah, apologies, and. I need to try and uh, try and remember names. Um, Dustin is saying he dropped some pics and an update of the models on Facebook about 50 odd in three days. And not a return to the old days, but it's a start. That D and D homework man technically painting these was homework. <laughs> yeah, I bet D and D takes some planning of your time, mate. I saw I saw you being there um, planning some stuff. Um, Michael saying, will you be coming to Spiel, Andy? Do you know what? I'd like to come at some point. I mean. Traveling abroad is never cheap, um, so I'm I'm not I I don't think I'd get I'd probably get there this year, maybe next year if if kind of my, if my interests in uh, in a board game and go the way they are as well, and I try and do a, a little bit of both stuff. I'm just reading Jamie's comment there. Sorry, um, who knows? Next year, maybe this year, de definitely not. I won't be doing it this year. Uh, Adam saying war game in Musk. <laughs> Michael says more miniature painting. Eh, so you're saying that it's not, not as bad as magic players. I couldn't possibly comment. And Jamie says bald bearded men in black t shirts. That stereotype is outdated. I resemble that remark. <laughs> yes. So uh, to kind of to to wrap it up, we're, we're kind of coming up about the last ten minutes now. Um, I really really enjoyed UK Games Expo. Um, it's it's got bigger than previous years. I think I said there was thirty percent more um, kind of um, so space for gaming and for for demos. There was something like twenty seven. Was it twenty seven thousand people were through the doors with over thirty four thousand kind of um, daily visits. So obviously some of that is people going more than one days, and um, some of them are just individual days. But it was. Um, it it was a really really good experience. The only thing I would say that I could would possibly make it better for me would maybe to kind of to meet up with some of some of you folks, get together and play some games. I think it's a perfect opportunity to kind of to have a meet up and to be able to sit together. There's loads of space to be able to play games. If you if you kind of if you stay overnight that kind of thing. Um, there is the the hotel, the Hilton Hotel, which is just um opposite the the NEC. They have open gaming on until two in the morning. It's becoming a really good convention, and it's becoming a really kind of American style convention, and that and that's no bad thing. Really, really enjoyed it, and I would recommend it to anybody who is into miniature gaming. Is is I would say if you you've got to kind of be, you know, if if you're just into games workshop stuff, go to Games Day or go go to kind of uh, Warhammer World. Don't go to something like this. But if you're into lots of different types of games, lots of different miniatures, if you're into board games, this is a it's a must go for me. I would say personally, it, this is my favorite convention of the year. Um, Shaggy, is you thinking about going to tabletop gaming live in London in September? I had considered it. I, I, I'd like to see a little bit more about it. It's the first year that it's on, um, and I would like to kind of go and support it. I think, and I, it's only a good thing that we have more of this kind of thing. Um, I just need to see a bit nearer the time. I think how uh, how much hobby funds I've got spare for it, and actually, and what's there, and is it worth going? Uh, Michael is saying magic players are even worse than the burgers from Bugmans. <laughs> Kyle saying it must be all the pork pies and cocktail sausages we eat. Yeah, it, it certainly hasn't done anything for my bonnet, has it? Uh, all that cocktail sausages in there and pork pies. Mark saying he sadly missed it. Hopefully, be there next year. Yeah, I think. Certainly, knowing you, Mark, and knowing the kind of the games and things that you play, you've got a similar kind of opinion on games that I have. You'd really enjoy it as well. Adam saying couldn't afford to go, otherwise you would. Hopefully next year. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean it's it's not the cheapest of places to go. You can It's in Birmingham, so it's relatively central for most of the country. But then that also means that most of the country have to travel there. Hotels are very expensive. Um, I don't know why they're expensive around 
this this one i went to uh insomnia not too long ago with my brother-in-law jason and we stayed overnight and i think the hotel at the hilton was like 100 110 pound for the night to stay at the hilton for the expo was almost 300 pound a night this year like this time i ended up staying somewhere kind of a, a bit of a drive away that cost me i think it was like 50 quid a night but it, it still kind of mounts up so it's it's not the cheapest of conventions to go to although i i guess if you go anywhere and travel and stay overnight in hotels obviously you, it, it's going to cost you a bit more but what i would say is there is plenty going on to make the most of it if you were only going to go to one you know if you're going to have to save up to, to go somewhere this for me would be the one that would be worth saving to go up to um jamie was saying he was supposed to have been in ghana otherwise he would have been there bloody hell mate that, that's a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a hike isn't it just to ghana uh michael is saying stupid question was the expo in london no it, it was in birmingham michael it was it was right it's right next to birmingham airport at the birmingham nec the um the national exhibition center uh, Tony saying, funny, I went as primarily a board gamer, but was volunteering, demoing for an independent games designer, but ended up only buying miniatures and wargaming stuff. I was surprised how much um, wargaming stuff there was, actually, Tony, to be fair. Shaggy was saying, really want to try and go to the UK Expo next year, better start saving. But what, what we should do is we, we should organise a trip. If, if people don't mind sharing rooms, we can always organise kind of hotel rooms and, you know, share single, single beds in twin rooms. We'll, we'll we'll get a little group together to start getting the price down um and i'm just saying third year for me each time it's bigger and better yeah i've been for quite a few years now as well i remember going it used to be in um in birmingham near the city center in a hotel called the strathallen hotel and and that reminded me of old style conventions where it was kind of a, a bit of an old building and it, and it looked like it had been put on by a number of little like war game and group type things the way it is now at the expo is it is really, really polished. It it just feels like a um a really professional event now. It might cost a little bit more, but I think you get more for your money. There's loads of um this kind of there's a, a lot of if you're into board game podcasts and that kind of thing, um the shutdown and sit up guys are there and they do a couple of live podcasts while they're there. There is the um no pun intended podcast. They do something live while they're there. There was the Warhammer um, chat this year as well, which was uh, announced the Shades by uh, the, the new, uh, I think it's the Hero or the Leader decks, announced that. There's there's no, there's no a million different um, sort of um, role-playing groups that you can just enter in. There's open gaming. There was, there was a, a, a group of people who were playing in the open gaming section. Had a big sign saying, um, anybody welcome to come and join. We've got biscuits. <laughs> there's just a lot of really kind of friendly people there. I would say it's a really inclusive a group of people it was really really good um where are we going now adam cena maybe at a blagger set in wolverhampton and get the train in to be honest if you can get the train in the train gets the uh, right to the um to the nec actually so it's perfect getting the train in from anywhere um <laughs> jamie is saying if you go next year do we all get press passes i'll see how many i can get i, I, don't, I don't think i'll get like tw 10 or 15 press passes like but who knows um tony is saying the hotels ramp their prices up for expo so i stayed in coventry 55 pound a night 20 minute drive unless you miss your exit and have to do a 20 mile detour yeah i i think i i ended up getting stung for the um the m6 toll road because i took a wrong turn as well on the way down and um i think i paid like i think it was like 52 pound a night or something for the hotel i was in although to be fair i, I didn't get a lot of sleep because i think i mentioned in facebook group <laughs> the the, le the level above me must have had the squeakiest floorboards in the world and every time anybody walked around in the room above me the ceiling shook and, and the little the lampshade rattled around so i guess you get what you, you get what you pay for um neil saying the premier ends are normally good to be honestly uh to be honest neil there is um there's a holiday in um like a or, or an ibis i think it is like an ibis budget one which is right next to the train station I had considered that for next year. I'd like to stay as close as possible so I can kind of stay, maybe have a beer, uh, do some of the late night gaming rather than driving in and out as I've done kind of, kind of previous years. So it's that balance between not paying too much for a hotel but not being too far away. I'm, I'm trying to get that balance and the dates have been announced for next year. I think it's from the 31st of May to the 2nd of June next year. So I'm trying to kind of get in and get a hotel room booked early. 
I'm also trying to kind of um, get my, my hotel points up by, by um, when I stay away with work to try and use them to pay for one of my rooms. Um, where we got... Uh, Shaggy is saying, why do I know... I have why do I not have that scene in the hotel room from planes, trains, and automobiles? It was kind of like that. To be fair, Sam slept like an absolute log. He slept through the whole thing. But I was just kind of like lying there going, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> um, Michael's saying the beds at the premiere. He loves them. Uh, and saying, don't forget all the tabletop RPG sessions. There was, there's so many. I mean, the, the Hilton Hotel over the road has loads of sessions running day and night. Um, there's loads of sessions in the actual NEC itself. There's there, it's worth the money for the amount of stuff you can do. Definitely. Um, Tony's saying all the staff and volunteers seem to be very upbeat, having a good time themselves, which helped make it really pleasant. Yeah, it just generally was a really nice atmosphere. I'll, I'll definitely agree with that. Hal Martin saying good day, Blackjack. Hope all is well, mate. Glad you had a great time at the expo. Nice to see you, Hal. Thanks for joining the stream again. Uh, Tony saying, yeah, got a total road in there too. Uh, Neil saying, I love the weekend away for Warhammer Fest and the night alone in a double bed. Yeah, that's never a bad thing, mate, is it? I mean, Warhammer Fest isn't a particularly uh, cheap event, is it, I think? Is it, is it about £40 for a ticket for Warhammer Fest? I also don't know, other than being able to see some new release stuff, is there much to do at Warhammer Fest? I've, I've never been to, to be able to compare it, really. Um, Tony saying at least there wasn't newlyweds in the room above. If they were newlyweds, all they were doing was just walking backwards and forwards all night. I think one, I must have had a sleepwalker. I think that's what it must have been. <laughs> uh, Michael saying it's not only newlyweds that make that too much noise. Once tried sleeping in the, to a half porn movie next door. So <laughs> I'm not even going to read that. You can read it on the screen, folks. I, I'm not going to say it out loud. <laughs> Uh, Adam says, stopping in random hotels as an electrician is fun. Rocking up, covered in dust, asking if they've got out spare. Glad I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> I can imagine the look on their face. At least you're not a plaster or something like that covered, covered all over. Uh, Jamie saying it's £20 for Warhammer Fest. Do you think you get your money's worth, Jamie, for Warhammer Fest? I, I, like I say, I've never been. I don't really know what's there. Is it worth the entrance fee just to see the latest stuff and see what's coming out? Um, or do you get something for your 20 quid? So then, folks, we are coming up to an hour and a half. Uh, I think we'll pretty much call it there. Jamie's saying there's lots of tournaments at Fest. It's more aimed at that. Okay, so you're paying really to enter tournaments and things. This is the one that's at the Rico Arena, isn't it? The football ground. Um, so what I will say, guys, is thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. I really appreciate you coming into the live streams. They're always a good chat. Um, videos have been a little bit kind of um, missing this last week. Um, I didn't get home in time for last Monday's live stream because it was bank holiday here in the UK and I was out. So apologies for missing last week. We're back to normal now. So we'll be hitting all our normal Mondays. Um, and I was things were a bit hectic last week with um, getting ready to go away for the expo and stuff. So we've got videos to come out from the interviews that I did at the expo. We've got some gameplay stuff to do from bits and pieces that we picked up. And um, hopefully we've got some more stuff to look forward to coming on the channel soon as well. So... Let me just read this. Jamie's saying, all this talk of hotels is fun. Try staying in some of the hotels I've stayed in in Africa. There you go. I'm sure that's uh, easy. So thank you once again, everyone. Uh, thanks for, for joining the live stream. Thanks for watching the channel. Much appreciated. Thank you to all of my, um, to all my Patreons as well. Um, been doing the Patreon for two months now as well. And every month I seem to get an extra one or two um supporters as well so thanks to everyone that does that it's thanks to your help that helps me pay for for things like these hotels as well to be able to go and visit these fantastic conventions and meet the fantastic companies that uh, that demo stuff there as well um so yeah thanks everyone and i will see you in the next video thanks very much